this episode, we're going to paint another Transformers miniature. So, stick around. Hello dorks and dorkettes and welcome to It Came From My Side of the Laundry Room. In this episode, I'm going to paint another Transformers miniature. This time it is Bumblebee. Now, I had a request to do Megatron and I just, I have not gotten my hands on one yet. But I was able to get a Bumblebee and I'm pretty excited to paint it. And it looks pretty simple to boot, so that's awesome. So, I'm going to use the color guide that it uses on the back of the package but I also have one of the reproductions that Walmart did and I'm going to use that as well to try to try to make an amalgam of them of toy to cartoon version so without further ado let's start painting okay here we go this is the Wiz Kids Transformers Bumblebee. And as you can see, so close to the cartoon. It's awesome. He's got his blaster. I mean, we'll take this out in a second, but I just wanted to show you the packaging. I love how they incorporate the old grid design into their packaging. And here's their color guide that they have. Yellow, black, light blue, and gray. So I have done that with my palette over here, but I've also added a little bit of silver and I have two shades of gray because I'm not really sure which one I want to go with. Um, let's crack this open. Like last time, it comes with decals and stickers so we can get that nice big Autobot symbol on his chest. And last time with the sound wave, I said I wanted to save the packaging, but I did not. He looks great out on the shelf the way he is. Displayed with some of my uh, cars, like he's hanging out with the Ecto-1 and the DeLorean. Okay, here we go. Very nice and sturdy. So we're going to put it on... This block of wood, which last time I figured out is a great way to paint. I see a lot of the pros on YouTube use really fancy blocks and things that cinch up around the miniature so you can paint it easier, but this is good enough for me for right now. Look at that, it even has the tire on the back. Now, like I said, I have the original to go by as well. Now, this isn't an original, this is the reproduction that Walmart came out with a few years ago. So I'm gonna put that there as a color guide as well. Unfortunately, it has some details on the toy that aren't on the mini, like the tail lights and stuff are on the toy, but not on this. So it's already primed, which is awesome, no pun intended. So, let's get started. Let me put this color guide here where I can see it as well. Here's the stickers I said it came with. The base, which I'll do like an 80's splatter paint on it as well like I did with Soundwave. So, let's start with... Let's start with light blue for the windows. Let's get the little stuff out of the way. And I'm just going to do a quick... It's okay, kitty cat. I'm just going to do a quick run through. And then we will come back when I get to do the detail. Which shouldn't be too much on this, honestly. Honestly. 
doesn't have as many details as the sound wave, which I'm thankful for. Sorry for that noise, that's my dryer saying it's finished. This is a laundry room after all, but it's not a shtick. I just happen to have to multitask and get my domestic duties done while I live the life of a, of a YouTuber. Now, I've never had luck with yellow, so I am kind of leery. So, um, a little bit came out, just a tad that we'll have to cover up with the yellow. So hopefully that goes okay. And this light blue I'm using is a little old, so it's a little thick, which will be nice just because we won't have to do multiple coats. sure we get up into all those little corners there now this side's going to be a little harder because of his shooting arm in the way move the camera just a tad bit closer hopefully it won't be super blurry a little sloppy. I anticipated that though with that arm up in the way. But it would be great if these miniatures were for a Transformer role-playing game. Wouldn't that be cool? Pick your pick whatever vehicle and robot form. Myriad of different weapons to choose. Different settings. I mean it could be on many different planets, like the cartoon showed. Could be on Earth, Cybertron, wherever. Now this is the bumper that I was talking about that I might do in silver because the toys is silver. They have it just in a gray. So we're going to do a light gray now on his face. Sorry, just had to double check that his nose was gray as well. Yeah, bro. 
brush out that smile. And his eyes are going to be this light blue as well. <clears throat> Let's see if we can hit them real quick without it messing everything up. The new cat Raven is saying hello. If you saw that episode where I introduced her, there she is. Always wanted a pure black cat. Pretty much ever since I saw Beastmaster and he had a black panther. Always wanted a black cat. Of course I dig Halloween, so that helps too. So from here, Guess we'll do some yellow. These are definitely times I wish I was ambidextrous. Sorry, crap, he wasn't even <laughs> in the camera. I apologize. But at least she got a little black kitten to look at.
seems very interested in what I'm doing. Just hopefully she doesn't mess with the paint. Oh, I forgot some blue there. Let's do that real quick. So I can put the yellow around it. Yes. So what's everybody's thoughts on Bumblebee? I have to say, I loved them in the cartoon, but I was very disappointed in the toy. When I was a kid, because he looked nothing like his cartoon counterpart. He always seemed like the voice of the children watching the show. He asked the questions, he uh, got into trouble. Ooh, extreme close up. So I'm gonna do some edging here this part's all gonna be black so that should cover up the yellow pretty good so it can be sloppy and get into these crevices I take them out of the camera again my apologies it's a learning process for me to paint while on camera hopefully you guys watch this and just relax I used to do this with a topic. <clears throat> I used to do the sentimentals and stuff with a little craft project to keep everybody entertained. But I wanted it to be a little bit more. So I made Dorks and Crafts as a show at first when I did the sound wave. But now we made it a segment one. It came from my side laundry room. 
just because I don't know how often I'm going to be doing this for it to be a whole show unto itself. And like I mentioned in the channel news, I'm not good enough to have a craft or painting show. I've seen so many amazing painters, miniature painters, miniature builders online that I know I can never get to that caliber. So why even try? Well, I'll try. But I know my limitations and patience. Sorry. I'm very happy with how these colors are coming out. Sorry, I bumped the camera. So in between sessions, I'll have to Put these, put my palette into a little baggie, keep it airtight. So they don't dry out. I said something a while back when I did a, I forget which episode it was, it was either the best Transformers figures or the best G.I. Joe figures, I can't recall. But I think it was an unpopular opinion, but I will state it again, that Optimus's death meant far more to me than Duke's potential demise. Granted, I'm a bigger Joe fan than I am a Transformers fan, but it's just something about Optimus Prime that no matter what, he always did what was right. And that meant the Autobots lost a lot more than they won a lot. But he always did what was right. And he always saved people. Now, Duke did the same, but he just had a more of a bravado to him that Optimus didn't have. Optimus kind of had a melancholy about him that actually felt like the war on Cybertron was real and has taken its toll on his mind, body, and soul. So his death affected me more because I was young but I was still was old enough to realize that 
the good guys don't always win. But he sacrificed himself to save Hot Rod. Which leads me to, I started writing a blog post, but never finished it, about accepting Hot Rod, not hating him. Because as a kid, I hated him. I'm sure a lot of people did. Because of his negligence was what caused Megatron to get the upper hand on him. His bravado, which ended up killing Optimus. We're already 26 minutes into this painting job. So, let me let you guys go, and then when you come back, we'll be putting the details on. So, see ya. Okay, here we go. It's 24 hours later, and I gave, went ahead and Pretty much did everything, but we still have some touch-ups to do. I wanted the paint to dry, so now we're back, and I apologize that the first part of this video ran so long, so we'll try to touch this guy up as quick as possible. All in all, I think it turned out pretty well. There was a few little spots that I wish the yellow would have covered a little bit better, but I also think it adds to the personality that he might be a little bit more grimy around the feet because the yellow, I would have to do a couple more coats for this to be completely covered. But once I put the uh, sealer on it, I mean, hopefully it'll shine it up nice and you won't even really know. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, just a few little areas I need to touch up. Mostly with the where the black paint accidentally touched. Like in these areas here. All in all, these are little areas not a lot of people will see. Especially when I have them up on the shelf next to Soundwave. And it's kind of disappointing on one hand that he didn't have as much detail as Soundwave. Soundwave had a lot of little stripes and stuff that I had to paint, which was a pain, but it was a good learning exercise. Plus I'm using an older paint, so it's a little bit thick. I was hoping that thickness would help out on the coverage, but unfortunately it didn't.
Ooh, he got hit in the crotch. So sorry. See a couple spots I need to hit with the black as well. But next I'm hoping to get Megatron, so we'll paint that. I have a couple other 80s inspired miniatures too that I could try to tackle one day. But they are your classic metal miniatures. Very small, a lot smaller than Bumblebee here. And I've already painted them the rudimentary colors and everything. I just need to do a lot of detail work on it. So that might be a good episode. Skip all of the preliminary stuff and just get right to the detailing. Wished his eyes would pop a little bit more. Could do a darker blue, I guess. I was thinking about maybe doing a dry brush with some silver around the gun. And also, I went with the same light blue on his headlights as his windows, and that didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. So let me hit those with the light gray. But I did do silver around them. I did silver on the bumper. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Now I know I did silver on the bumper, but I'm using some of this light gray because some of the yellow is showing through. And that seems to cover it up a little bit better. black there. See a whole yellow spot that I didn't get. Let's see if I can 
get to it easy without messing anything up. Touch up some more yellow spots here. Sorry, I had to... I'm at the bottom of the barrel for my yellow here. So I'm just trying to get some. So I can finish these spots up. Okay, once over here. See another black spot. See another yellow. Oh, fudge. Oh, and here's another cat. This is Dusty. Hello, Dusty. Sorry, I didn't mean to take that out of frame, but I didn't want them getting into the paint. I think... We're just going to call it. Uh, saw another yellow spot. And what spots I didn't get, we'll just say are character. So, let's take a look at these stickers here. Put the sticker on, we'll let the paint dry. Then I will work on the base. There's 
aren't the stickers, are these the stickers? We put some clear coat on that. That'll blend in nice. Ooh, one thing I did want to do. Brighten up these eyes a little bit. Take some of this paint off the brush. the way, isn't it? Different shade of gray. Oh. I'm sure this is quite entertaining, so I apologize. But like I've stated before, I have to multitask. So I'm filming an episode while I'm doing the laundry and painting a miniature I've wanted to paint. The darker eyes really help out. So, let's put him to the side to dry. Do this base real quick. And then come back with a finished product. Like with the star screen, or the sound wave, I just want to do some cool 80s splatter some neon colors here. The green isn't coming out as good as I would want it. Pink looks good though. Reminds me of the uh, skating rink we go to here in town. Their carpet looks like that. So anyway, let me 
let everything dry, put some clear coat on it, and then we'll be back to show you the final product. Okay, here's the final product, and it looks heaps better with a nice shiny coat. Nice running pose. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it's a little bit long and I apologize, but like I said, I multitask, get some stuff done, and just wanted to paint this dude and invite you guys along. So if you like this episode, please give a thumbs up. If you got something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading them, and I love getting back to everybody. And if you're new around here and you enjoyed this or any of the other episodes that YouTube is recommending down here, please hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell icon, you'll be notified whenever there's a new episode. So anyway, until next time, thanks for watching. Keep being rad and stay dorky.